Hey everyone, today I want to talk about the thoughts we have about prayer. And before we jump in today, I want to start by taking a look at where thoughts and prayer start. I need you to brace yourself. I love science and it's about to come your way. Did you know that there's a part of your brain that actually shapes your experience with God? That means that your experiences with God can actually play a part in shaping your brain. That's crazy to think, right? Now I want you to get ready for a big word. It's actually two words, and I had to look it up and look up how to pronounce it. So if I get it wrong, bear with me. That part of your brain is called the anterior singlete. I know this sounds like something a wrestler would wear, but it's actually a part of our brain. When that part of your brain is strong and built up, it helps you understand and experience God as a close, personal, and compassionate God. In other words, it helps you really experience the way that God knows and cares about you. And here's something fascinating. The brain you're born with is not the one that you always have. Your anterior singleta doesn't just stay the same over time. You can literally grow it like a muscle. Recently, scientists have discovered that the number one way to grow this muscle is through daily practice of prayer. When you just give 10 minutes a day to prayer, you're exercising that part of your brain, like I said, the same way that you exercise your muscles. The more you do it, the more that part of your brain grows and the stronger it will get. Maybe you've heard someone say this, prayer can change us. Well, this is literally how prayer changes the shape of your brain. While it's cool to know some science about prayer, isn't it true that the idea of prayer can be kind of intimidating? Prayer is one of the main ways we connect with God, like actually God. So no pressure, right? Something about that can make prayer feel difficult or, or easy to get wrong. For a long time, that was how I felt about prayer. Like I was gonna be put on the spot and told to pray out loud at any moment when the stakes were high and that I wouldn't get it right. Or maybe your story is you've tried to pray even for five minutes and it just seems like an eternity. Some schools even have that quick moment of silence in the morning when you're supposed to try and make yourself pray, but by the time you come up with something to say, it's already over. Or maybe you've tried to pray before you go to sleep, but your mind wanders. If that's you, I totally get it. But I also want you to know that I found something that has helped me a lot when it comes to trying to pray. And I hope that it can help you too. The whole idea begins with, one of these. Sure, talking on the phone was still possible back in the day, but nothing else was because a landline can only do one thing, phone calls. You can receive a call or you can make a call, but that's it. And most people treat prayer like that landline. We only use it to do one thing, the help me prayer. You know the ones, the here's what I want, could you help me get it kind of prayers, or the fix my situation prayer. The, if you get me out of this one, I'll never do it again, please just help, kind of prayer. You might not even consider yourself religious and have maybe caught yourself letting out a help in a moment of unexpected danger. This is a landline prayer because it's only about one thing, what God can do for us. And listen, everybody has said this kind of prayer. You don't even have to be a Christian to pray those kinds of prayers. You just have to be in some kind of trouble. And don't get me wrong, God can handle all of our desperate cries for help but that is just one way to see prayer. Now, how many of you have seen one of these? All of you, you may have one in your pocket. If you treated this phone the same way that you treated this phone, you wouldn't be getting the most out of this, right? It would be a total waste of money, total waste of technology, and sometimes a total waste of time. This is not just a phone, it's a camera. You can text, you can order food, you can search on the internet, you can watch videos, play games, and get directions all on a smartphone. If I were to ask you which one was better, a landline or a cell phone, it'd be easy, right? The same is true for prayer. I want you to see prayer like you see a smartphone, like there's so much more prayer can do and you'll enjoy it way more. Prayer is the same. It's more than just an emergency go-to, but if that's all we've ever used it for, we may be missing out. But where do we start? How do we treat prayer like something more? What other ways can we pray besides just asking for help? I wanna look at something Jesus said about prayer in the most famous prayer he ever gave called Sermon on the Mount. In this passage, Jesus is telling us how to pray 
and he starts by saying, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We don't have to guess. Jesus gives us the how. But before we break down those verses, it's important to note that before Jesus shared this prayer, he pointed out some other things about praying while he was giving his sermon. He encouraged us to be real, to avoid praying for the sake of impressing those around us. Then he encouraged us to be honest, like we talked about last time. God already knows how we feel before we say it. So why not be honest about when we pray? Finally, he encouraged us to be consistent, not just pray once and walk away, but make it a part of our lives. Be real, be honest, be consistent. That's the heart Jesus wants us to have behind our prayers. And that's what he showed us in the Lord's Prayer. You see, Jesus gave us this prayer not only to show us the heart he wants us to have when we pray, but to give us an idea of how. When we're not sure what to say or if we're doing it wrong or how we're supposed to start, Jesus gave us this prayer to be the answer. And it all boils down to three simple words. Thanks, please, and sorry. Jesus began the Lord's Prayer by speaking words of thanks, by talking about God's greatness and showing his gratitude for how holy and awesome God is. Then he laid his requests before God, asking God to do things like provide and forgive. And finally, he took a moment to ask God for forgiveness, to confess our own wrongdoings, our mistakes, where we've fallen short. And of course, Jesus was perfect and without sin, but he was giving us an example of how to include this same sorry in our own prayers when we feel like we've got it wrong. Thanks, please, and sorry. It's as simple as that. Some days those may be the only words that we can pray. Other days we may have more to say to God. And while there's really not a formula to doing prayer right, you might start by using those three words as kind of an outline. Tell God what you're thankful for, then express your needs to God, and finally, let God know what you're sorry about and where you need forgiveness in your life. Listen, we're just starting at this place, and it's gonna feel uncomfortable, just like anything else in life. When we start something new, we feel uncomfortable, but with practice, we become better and we grow in whatever it is that we're practicing. If you just wanna tell God about your day or the person you wish you could notice in your geometry class, or how annoying your little brother is, God wants to hear it. He's for you, he loves you, and nothing you wanna to talk to God about is off limits. God wants to know you and wants to give you direction in life. So keep that conversation going. Prayer isn't just about the words you say, but the way that you pray. And Jesus has told us how.